So we call the project Sikhism Awareness for Everyone. Safe. Uh, basically talking to the people in the street, we don't know who's going to come talk to us. But we're just going to educate them about Sikhi and have a conversation with them. That's the main thing, right? See what they think, see what they know. Ladies, you got a second? Guys, you got a second? Ladies, you got one minute for a YouTube channel? What? It's the question. One minute for a question. You don't even know the question. One second, man. One second, one second, simple question, okay. What, what do you know about the Sikhs? Do you know anything about the Sikhs? What Sikhs? The Sikh people, this, this religion, the fifth largest world religion. No, you, I don't not, know. You know anything about no it? Idea. We're just educating people about Sikhs, finding out what they know about the Sikhs. You know anything about the Sikhs? The Sikhs? Yeah. Like, like, what is the Sikhs? Okay, it's like the fifth largest world religion. But what, is this Hindu or what is No, 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 so it's not Hindu, okay. it's not... Are on camera? Yeah, we're live on camera. Okay. It's not Hinduism, it's not Islam. But we're not Hindus or, or Muslims. You're not Mennonites? No, no, we're, 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 we're Sikhs, look. Sikhi. So the very first thing to know is that we believe in one God, right? So we need one creator who is not just, is not just separate from this world, but is all around us. Yeah? So we're inside God, in a way. And then the second thing is that we're all equal. So all of mankind, whether they're black, white, gay or straight, um, you know, Christian, Sikh, whatever, makes a difference, we're all equal. So this equality is the main aspect of Sikhi, right? And then the fact that we're here as a human being, we've got one main purpose. That main purpose is to connect to God while we're here alive. The Sikh tradition was founded by a man named Nanak, who Sikhs refer to as Guru Nanak. And the word Guru means teacher or enlightener. It's a term of reverence. But for Sikhs, it's a very specific institutional term that refers to a lineage of prophets who lived from 1469 to 1708. In the Sikh tradition, there are 10 prophets, starting from Guru Nanak in 1469, and the last Guru Gobind Singh passed away in 1708. The belief is that each of these prophets shared a single vision. The Gurus believe there's only one creator, and we're all equal. Mm -hmm. And that all of us have here at the top of our head, uh, an energy center, which allows us to experience God. We call this a tenth gate. Uh, the guy over there is talking about smoking weed. I used to smoke weed. Yes. Yeah? I used to get high. People only get high for the sake of the high, right? Yes. But what if you can get that for free? Sure. Wouldn't it be better? Yeah. And no hangovers? It sounds great. No uh, uh, going up to random strange people in dark alleyways trying to score drugs of them. Sure. You know what I mean? I know. And on top of that, let's say, let's say someone go high every day. So you probably might know some people like this. They get high every day. After some time, they're going to need more and more drugs to get the same high. Right. You agree? Yes. Whereas with this stuff, meditation, you do, even if, if you do it every day, after some time, you get more high from doing the same amount. Right. So it's an increase. It's yes. not a depreciation, it's an increase. Yes. So actually, logically, it makes perfect sense to meditate. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah? yeah. And so there's the gurus, they said, look, you know what? You need to experience God inside you. Once it gets inside you, this fire, right? Uh -huh. Love. That love inside you, the tent top of our head, this allows you to connect. When this happens, your whole body is full of bliss and joy and love. Another foundation in Sikh theology is the idea of love. In the Sikh tradition, there is not as much emphasis on what happens to us after we die as there is on what happens to us when we live. For example, in the Sikh scripture, we say, Raj na chao, mukat na chao, man charan kam bhave. The Guru here is saying that I don't care about power, Raj. I don't care about salvation, Mukat. Man charan kam lare. All I really want is to be in love. And this very nicely encapsulates the concept or the centrality of love as the ultimate objective. Sikhs now, we follow the text, the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a unique scripture because the Guru made it. It's not a one faith scripture. The gurus didn't just put their own writings. Very uniquely in this world, they put the writings of people that are from different backgrounds in there. Mm. The reason was the truth is everywhere. Ah, there you go. Like, let's say you are a, you're an American scientist, right? Let's say, let's sure. say, for example, you come yeah. up with a mathematics theorem now. Here, yeah. I'm from England. Somebody else is from China. All three people meet, and they're like, "I got this theory." They discuss that. I got the same theory. It's the same maths. Right. Just different languages, different backgrounds. Sure. So the Guru is like, you know, it's the same truth, it's in all backgrounds, it's in all religions. Mm. Yeah? So don't discriminate on the basis of religion. Yeah? See God as one in everyone.
After 9-11, a new de facto racial category is constructed, the apparent Muslim. Doesn't matter if they are Muslim or not, it just matters that they look Muslim. Sick Americans appear to be Muslims, appear to fall into what is the stereotypical image of a terrorist that the media presents before Americans. I was walking with my younger brother. Uh, it was dusk, sun was coming down. It wasn't dark yet. It was in Harlem. Went past a group of um, about 30 or 40 kids on a bike, noticed them. Noticed a family, a white family and their kids walk right through that group of people and didn't kind of have a spidey sense that went off that something was gonna be wrong. And when we walked through, uh, I heard Osama terrorist, somebody came and kind of snapped back my head and pulled my beard. Um, and then uh, I just saw behind me a, about 20, 30 bikes mobilizing, coming in our direction. I was looking out for my little brother in the corner of my eye. Uh, he's clearly better at defending himself than I was. Uh, I think he got punched in the face once and uh, was otherwise fine. Um, and, uh, and I was punched much harder uh, a few times. Uh, and ultimately, my jaw was fractured. Another challenge faced by sick Americans is through cyberbullying. Sick Americans, in particular, have been targets of cyberbullying. People have taken the images of sick Americans, posted them on the internet, and presented these sick individuals as being something that they're not, distorting their images, saying that these people are terrorists because they look like terrorists, or in other instances, you know, making fun of them because of their unique appearance. And that's been a huge problem for the community. I had taken a uh, biology exam that day. On the way back home, I got a Facebook message from one of my friends who said, look, you're on the internet. I was like, what? I'm on the internet? What does that mean? I clicked on the link he had sent me and immediately I was like, oh, I'm on the internet. And I immediately knew what was being discussed, my hair, why I look the way I look like. I uh, took a break and then I went up into my room, I read all the comments and I didn't really react, I didn't really feel anything. I just knew I had to type something, some response and even that I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> it just was a very authentic reaction and I typed it up, clicked send. I read some more comments, and then I fell asleep. The next thing I know, it's like everywhere. I was thrown in a whirlwind of speaker engagements, traveling. Most of all, I felt this pressure to always be that Reddit girl, um, the person who responded with such grace. <laughs> um, and I wasn't really ready for that responsibility yet. Another challenge faced by sick Americans is that of school bullying. Kids in America who belong to the Sikh faith are bullied at rates that are far greater than any other. And it is because of their unique religious identity. So my story doesn't just, it's not a one-time one incident. It's been a follow-up of incidents, right, that have come together and formed this, this inner relationship with, with my peers and me. I had problems on the bus. People were physically you know, grabbing my, my turban, my star, and they would yank it off. And then eighth grade was the breaking point where all this escalates, where everything just cracked. After lunch, we would go to the library to, you know, and just read. But this one particular day, we didn't, we didn't. I'm going back out. At the same time, I'm surrounded by you know, his friends and him. And he goes on to you know, slap me across the face. He keeps on pushing me back and back and back. I'm just you know, trying to not move so I can show some resistance. And then I'm walking back and he tackles me right into the classroom and he throws eight punches at my face and my chest, eight at my chest and eight at my, and eight at my face. So I'm just sitting in the class on the floor, knocked out with blood all over the ground well, and then 20, 20 minutes later, you know, a teacher shows up 
instead of you know being called in my parents being called which were called later I'm sent to an ISS room which is in school suspension right so which which logged my uh, that day as that I spent it in, in school suspension and so after that my parents are called and they're told your child has been attacked but, but tell me I, uh, I'm confused why do you grow your hair why do we grow our hair good question we actually have it on the back here look why do we have turbans and bits we grow our hair because the guru as the guru said it's from the beginning of time Holy people have always kept their hair. Yes, yes. That's, 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 true. True. that's true. That's true. You look in uh, the Moses, Prophet Muhammad had long hair, had beard. So the idea is that from the beginning of time, holy people kept their hair. Firstly, this is how we're supposed to look. We're supposed to accept our our God-given root, our form from God. But unfortunately, the society programs us, brain that we're not we're not good as we are. We have to keep changing, plucking, shaving, all that kind of stuff. And the gurus are free us from that. They say, be natural, be how you are, right? And people will end up accepting you as you are. The second thing is why the turban and the beard, so we stand out. Wherever I go, you know I'm a Sikh, right? You can wear, I can wear anything, you know I'm a Sikh. Yeah? Why is that? Why should I stand out? Okay, you see over here, there's some people that have got uniform on, right? They're carrying a gun. They got uniform. What are they? Police. The police, yeah? Why do they wear a uniform? The police. But why do they wear a uniform? Show people that they are officers. Why do they want to show people that they're officers? Like a policeman, right? You have a policeman walking around wearing jeans and t-shirts with no sign that he's a policeman. You wouldn't turn to him for help or her for help. But if you got somebody walking around with a uniform, you know there's a policeman. Then if something happened to you, you'd go to them. So the idea that we have is like, wherever you go, you stand out. Now, if I'm, even if I'm wearing a t-shirt, it makes a difference. Everybody that knows about Sikhs looks at me and goes, oh, that's a Sikh. I'm often asked, what is the meaning of the turban or why do you wear a turban? And I think the one thing that I get to convey, which I think changes people's impression of who they thought I was, uh, what kind of person I am, is uh, this is my crown. And it's a cotton crown. And it is so you never can hide away from being sick. I oftentimes say that, you know, in, in India, only the royal t could wear a, a turban, a dastar. And in this, you know, incredible moment um, of foresight, of rebellion, of royalty, at the same time, the Sikh gurus said everybody should wear a crown. So my advice to everyone that's out there Take that very, very small step to introduce yourself and try to engage with people that you think are different. One person at a time, we can change the mentality of people. We can let them know that we can all be great right. neighbors, we can all be great classmates. And right for non six if you witness someone being harassed, you know, stop it. That behavior is un unacceptable. You know, kids like my brother, they go through bullying. At that extent, you don't want to go back to school. You don't want to be a part of society. The biggest part of the problem we're facing is that we lack documentation. If it's any kind of bullying, make sure you report it. We can't change anything until they see this in numbers, right? We, we have to make it more than just our stories that we share within ourselves. We have to make it beyond us. We have to take it to the next level and really pursue for those social changes that we very much deserve. I already knew what people thought of me as I went outside out of my dorm and I went on campus. I had already come to terms with the fact that people had these questions about me, my gender, my identity, and I was okay with it. And so what he did was fine. He was acting on his own thoughts, his own beliefs, his own idea of what it means to be a woman. And then I simply said, hey, this is another way of looking at it. Now, whenever people do see not only just sick women, but women in general, they will think twice as to why, the way she, why she is the way she is, and that Maybe that picture and the response and the whole 
incident hopefully taught not only me, but others how to embrace diversity and offer them a glimpse of the sheer amount of diversity that we have in our world. And that it just takes one step out of your comfort zone to come in terms with it.